And so when studying two population proportions, we can also find a confidence interval and the formula is given here. So the p hat one minus p hat two looks familiar. Notice inside the square root, instead of p bar and q bar, we actually have p hat one, q hat one, and p two, p q hat two, and the populations, and of course z alpha over two. The rule still holds that if you want to use a confidence interval in place of a hypothesis test, you only reject if zero is not a possibility. If zero is not in your range, then you're going to reject H naught. But if zero is in the confidence interval, then zero could be a possible outcome, and P1 minus P2 could be zero. So here is a problem. Because 20% 20, 20 of 75 students left a tip at coffee shop A, and only 18% of 50 people left a tip at coffee shop B, test the claim that more people tip at coffee shop A. Okay, so let's go ahead. Coffee shop A is mentioned first, so let's figure out all of that information. So shop A, our first population, or P1, the first thing it says is 20%. So this means p hat 1 is 0.2. Remember, percentages should always be changed to decimals for calculations. Out of 75 people meant n1 was 75. And we do need q hat 1 for these problems. For the hypothesis test, we did not. So 1 minus p hat would be 1 minus the 0.2, which is 0.8. We don't need N1, I mean X1. Okay, I just fixed that. So we don't need X1 in this formula. And now we can find our second population data. So coffee shop B, our P2, our population 2. That one started off with 18%, so P hat 2 is 0.18. N2 is the 50 people of the 18%, and Q hat 2 is to take the complement and get 0.82. And lastly, we'll need Z alpha over 2 for the 90% confidence interval that we're about to create. So you've either memorized it or you're using the cheat, the bottom right corner of the Z table, but you find that Z alpha over 2 is 1.645. So now, starting off our confidence interval over here, we start with p hat 1, which we said was 0.2. Then we're going to subtract p hat 2, which was 0.18. Now we subtract z alpha over 2, multiply with our square root that starts off p hat 1 times q hat 1. So we've got those numbers. Then we divide by N1, which we've already found to be 75. Don't forget the formula says that we're going to add. And now we take the P hat 2 times Q hat 2, which we've already found. So 0.18 times 0.82, dividing by N2, which is 50. And that's just the left side of our confidence interval. Now we need to do that again, where it's 0.2 minus 0.18. Oh, my formula says minus, but it should say plus. Whoops, wrong pen, sorry. And now I can enter all that into my calculator. Again, you should be able to enter the square roots as one giant formula. The square root of 0.2 times 0.8 divided by 75 plus 0.18 times 0.82 divided by 50. So the whole thing without any single... Um, parentheses, negative 0 0.097 to 0 0.137, etc. We're told to answer as a percent with one digit after the decimal, so I'm going to come down to my first number, move the decimal two places to get a percent, round on my one place after the decimal, and the low end for my confidence interval is negative 9.7 percent, and the true subtraction of population should be between that and changing the last number to a percentage, which is going to give me 13.7%. So now I need to decide whether I reject or fail to reject H0. So looking at my confidence interval, since 0 is in that range, 
we fail to reject H0. The rule is if H0 is not in the confidence interval, but it's not not, <laughs> if it wasn't in there, we'd reject. If it is in there, we don't reject. We fail to reject H0.